man, nothing fancy, has been together now for a little bit over 15 years, all the original members right here, what you see. And, uh, Nobody else will have us. <laughs> That's work for us. And I want to tell you, you know, I've been doing this here lately. I've been telling the audiences rude stories because a lot of folks want to hear stories that happen to the band on the road. And I want to tell you, um, I'm a practical joker, and and these guys are too. So we always have to be aware of what each other's going to do. But and one thing about keeping a band together for this long, you have to understand each person's personality and what makes them tick and what makes them not tick. So you have to understand that. So I'm going to tell you about our guys quickly. Our banjo player over here, Mitchell Davis, he is just like a kitten. He's just easy going. And if you if you pet him under the arms, he's yours for the rest of the night. That's the way he is. Nothing like I said. He's just a soft tick. And now, you got got uh, Mr. Gary Ferris over here. Our tenor singer, guitar player. He is what we call goosey. Where we come from. He's spastic. And uh, things can't be done quite fast enough for him. And I'm telling you the honest truth. Please do not walk up behind him or beside him and touch him in the side. Because if you do, and he's holding a cup of iced tea, it's going to be poured on you. Or if he's not holding anything, he might hit you. And it's not on purpose. He's just goosey. That's the way he is. So he's, he's always on edge. Now, our bass player, this gentleman, we don't have a word to explain to our bass player. Complex. Complex. We found this gentleman standing out in the middle of the parking lot just looking. All you got to do is say, look at that squirrel on the stand. Well, you can even say, hey, look at that dead bird, Tony. So, I mean, that's how he is. I mean, we just don't know what, we really don't understand him, but he works. It, it works. Our fiddle player, he is the musically educated one of our bunch, and very much so. When our bus gets off on that rumble strip, he's the first one to tell us what key we're rumbling at. <laughs> that key's too high, you That's right. He'll come around and say, slow down. That's just how he is. And uh, I'm pretty mild, and I can be testy sometimes, too. I'm a bit deaf. But anyway, and like I said, I'm a practical joker. We were playing this show one night down around Richmond, Virginia, and uh, they had us, they gave us a really nice dressing room. We had our own restroom, we had our own shower, and everything was in there, food, drinks, and the whole nine yards. And they put us in there, and the guy come and knocked on the door, and he said, Nothing fancy, you have three minutes before you go on stage. And when he said that, I heard Mitchell say that, Well, I gotta use the bathroom before we go on stage. So I got to think. Now there's a shower stall right beside the urinal. And it has a shower curtain that you can't see through. And I thought, I'm going to get behind that curtain. And when he comes in, I'm going to scare the you know what out of him. So I went in there and I got behind that shower curtain. And I, I thought, man, what's taking him so long? I heard him say he had to do it. So finally I hear the door open. And I'm sitting out biking on the floor and keep keeping my thing. This is going to be great. So he steps up to the urinal. And I grabbed that curtain and I went, ah! It wasn't him, it was Goosey. <laughs> I mean, this is a true story. He was like a cat. His little paws was beating that curtain and my head was on. Like and I was laughing all the way down. <laughs> if I would have died that night, I would have died with a smile on my face. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. But that's just a little road story for you there. <laughs> We might have more road stories before the night get home. <laughs> right now we're going to do a beautiful song for you, something we've started doing uh, in the twin fiddle category. And something I also want to tell you, folks, uh, when the economy started going south and I make my living playing music, I got to think, you know, what's going to happen to the music industry? I got to do something. So I'm also been a woodworker in my life, so I started building fiddles to supplement my income. And uh, Mitchell Davis is playing one of my Andy's fiddles. So far, I've given him this one, so I'm not making any extra money off these things at all. <laughs> but uh, this particular fiddle here, this is the, I don't name my fiddles or anything like that. I, just, I do sign them on the inside of another one. 
and this is number two. So I always like to say that Mitchell's holding my number two right now. <laughs> Thank you. 